it's not that I have confidence that gold will regain its preeminence. It has nothing to regain. Uh, because if we're going to say it's going to regain it, then it doesn't have it now. No. Gold is money right now. Meaning when you when you transfer any dollar or uh, or yen or euro or whatever, what it is that you are doing is you are transferring a derivative of gold or silver. That's what you're doing now. Now, the, the question is not when gold will regain its preeminence, but when fiat currency as a substitute for gold and silver will lose its preeminence as the way to transfer gold and silver when making a transaction. Do I believe that gold and silver as gold substitutes will lose their preeminence for the, the main method of transferring real money, which is gold and silver? Yes, they will lose that status because statistically every single gold and silver substitute that has ever been known to man in all of financial history has all fallen to zero. So do I think this will be the first exception in world history? No, I'm not naive and I don't believe that. Now, the, the question is always when and how. Um, we don't know the answer to that question exactly when, but we do know that for the first time since late 1970s, early 1980s, the Federal Reserve, which is arguably the most powerful central bank as the issuer of the world's reserve currency, they are in negative equity for the first time since 1980, meaning the assets on their balance sheet are losing value you know, as they own assets and those are bonds, mostly treasuries and mortgage backed securities and the values of those, the value of those securities fall when you hike interest rates. And so the dollar, which is chiefly backed by those assets, treasuries and mortgage backed securities and a slight little amount of gold in Fort Knox, which is also on their balance sheet, those assets are losing value. And meanwhile, the Fed has to pay more and more in interest on the excess reserves that it pays these banks. It has, there's, there's something like five trillion dollars in reserves plus all the reverse repos that all this cash that the banks can't really do anything with so they loan it back to the fed and the fed pays interest on those reserves so the fed has to pay more and more and more of that of those dollars out to banks and they're getting less and less and less on their assets on their balance sheets so they're losing money and the the financial definition of hyperinflation you can define it in consumer terms is when the desire to hold cash balances falls to zero you can try to define it in terms of the rate of price increases in the consumer sector, or you can define it financially as when a central bank, the issuer of that currency, goes bankrupt. How can an issuer of money go bankrupt? It's not an issuer of money. It's an issuer of money substitutes. When those money substitutes no longer substitute for real money and the value of those substitutes go to zero. That's the financial definition of hyperinflation. The liabilities of this issuing central bank are worthless. And that's what happens to every central bank in history. No, no exceptions, none. They printed uh, so many uh, dollars since COVID and, and really since 2008, that there's all this extra cash that the Fed has to pay the banks on those reserves or the banks will have to try to loan them out into the economy. And that would be catastrophic for the dollar because then all of a sudden you'd have these trillions of dollars in the economy that weren't there the day before. And what happens to the value of the dollar then? I mean, it would just be, it would be unprecedented. Everything that's going to happen since 2008 is unprecedented, but it would just be another unprecedented thing within the unprecedented chain of events that's happened uh, the last 12, 13 years. And so they're paying the banks to keep them in and they're going to have to pay more and more and more. It puts them in an impossible situation. Either they suffer the losses on their balance sheet, which means that the dollars that they have to issue these banks to keep their reserves inside the Federal Reserve System, those dollars are literally unbacked. Because the dollars that have come into existence until now, how they come into existence is they buy treasuries. Like the Fed takes in the asset of treasury on its balance sheet and in return gives the liability of the dollar to whoever they're buying the treasury from, which is usually JP Morgan or some commercial bank. Right? So JP Morgan gets these reserves and the Fed gets an asset. But if the Fed has to pay interest on the reserves that JP Morgan already has, how do they bring those dollars into existence to pay JP Morgan? They bring them into existence with, without getting any asset in return. So there you have a truly unbacked dollar. That's where we are now. We're already going downhill. There's no way the Fed can stop its losses without printing more money and buying more bonds. That's what it's going to have to do. It's going to have to reverse interest rates. And we all know what's going to happen to gold and silver when they reverse interest rates, when price inflation, as they measure it, is around 10%. You know, everyone's going to say, oh, forget it. The dollar is gone. We're going to, we're going to go to real money.
that's what's going to happen. So it's one thing or the other. I mean, we see the Fed being sandwiched on both sides, both directions. Either they lose money on their balance sheet or they destroy the dollar and they're running out of maneuvering room. It's just a matter of time, just waiting for that singularity to hit where they really cannot move anymore and everything explodes. And I think it's going to happen suddenly. When it starts to move, everyone is going to know at the same time what is happening. And we're not far away from that. I don't think we're years away. I think we're months away, despite what's going on in the gold and silver markets. We're experiencing a global bankruptcy. All governments are bankrupt. It hasn't revealed itself yet, but usually what solves these problems is bankruptcies. I don't know what the straw is. The camel's back is loaded up with a bunch of garbage. And uh, <laughs> what's going what's gonna to break it? I wish I knew what that straw was because then I'd look for that straw and I'd say, when that straw hits, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do what I need to do. I don't know what the straw is going to be, but are we going to have more Sri Lankas? Yeah, we are definitely going to have that. We've had that in Europe many times in the past. Impoverishment, hyperinflation all over the, uh, all over that continent. How bad is it going to get? It's going to get bad for people who do not own real assets and it's going to get slightly less bad for people who do own real assets. It's not going to be easy for anyone, even if you've got all the gold and silver that you that you need. It's going to be hard for everyone. But what we want is to make it easy for those who see what's coming. But let's, you know, let's go back in time to 1973, 1974. Nixon had just uh, closed the gold window and the, the fixed rate. I don't like to say went off the gold standard because we, we never went off the gold standard. There is still a gold standard and that dollars are still exchangeable for gold. You could still get gold for a dollar. So there is still a gold standard. But what happened in 1973 was you had the oil embargo. And I think in that year, food prices went up just in that year, 20%. And there were real uh, worries of, of hyperinflation in that year. And what did gold do from 1974 to 1976? It fell. It fell like 50%. Some crazy number like that. And everyone was asking the same questions. What is happening here? Why is, why is gold falling? You have an oil embargo. You have these crazy price increases and gold is going down. That's insane. The answer is, yeah, yeah, it's insane. But does it last? No, never does. Because what happens? What happened from 1976 to 1980? No, gold quintupled. But then reality is still reality. And the reality still is that all of the money that we use, all the money substitutes that we use are still based on that same pyramid where the base of it is gold and silver. It does, that does not change. That cannot change. So how long is this going to last? Are we in 1976 now? I hope so. Uh, I, I believe that we're close because, because the, the Fed again is being cornered and once it can't move, the, the, the metals are the the metals have to move 